We're in Bracken County, Kentucky, kind of a northeastern part of Kentucky. We're about an hour from Cincinnati. We're about 20 minutes um, north of Maysville. Bracken County is known for its rolling hills, um, and it's a good place to raise cattle. It's a farming community, pretty rural. We know all of our neighbors really well, and we wave at each other as we go down the road and help each other if we need help with getting cows in and things like that. I love the community that we live in. We've been able to raise our family here. We have six children who are now almost all grown and left the nest. We have two children left at home. Now we do grass-fed beef and our soap business. We started out with the idea and the hope of helping our baby's skin. Anna was having some skin issues. The doctor said it was probably eczema. I just kind of whispered a prayer one night when I was putting lotion on her legs and it, it burned her legs. And we both cried together and I just sort of whispered a prayer of, you know, God help me come up with something. And I had tried so many other things for Anna's skin. My grandmother had lived with us and we talked about how natural products would be able to help maybe. So I started studying the natural properties of the herbs and the oils and how to make soap. And then I sort of needed to go on my own journey. I had to study the part of what made it all go together to work. Learning each oil so that you'd have the soap in the end that you really want to have. We don't use any perfumes or chemicals. The biggest differences in our soap is that we infuse into the olive oil that we use different herbs such as lavender, calendula, chamomile. We even use some comfrey, uh, which is also known as bone knit, to make some of our salves and to put into our facial soap. Plantain, which grows in our yard a lot of times, you can just pick that and dry that and we'll uh, mix that up with the olive oil and let that sit for a few weeks and infuse into that. We use a lot of organic coconut oil and my organic palm oil, other fine oils like apricot kernel, cocoa butter and shea butter and fresh goat milk as well. Goat milk is nourishing to the skin when you put it into soap. It just gives it a silkiness. The special orders is something I really like to do. We can make special soaps when people need a certain kind of oil in their soap. I've had people say, I don't want to use it, it's too pretty. We say, just use it and we'll make more. I like using plant material for the colorants just because, again, it's a very natural product. We infuse a natto root for a yellow color in some of our soaps. This one is my favorite. It is alkanet root. And we will take about two cups of that in a quart of olive oil and heat that up and strain it back out. And it just makes this beautiful, deep, burgundy, reddish color. This is lemon balm, which we had the plant material and put that into the olive oil. And I've been putting that into the soaps we've made this week that have citrus in them. I just like to make it beautiful so that it's attractive to the eye. And then when you smell it, it's attractive to your sense of smell. We probably make 12 to 14 different kinds, and that's always changing. We usually add one new kind every year, at least one. Uh, last year, we added lemongrass and lavender, which was a completely surprising batch that we made that has been very, very popular. It's something about the way that they blend, because with essential oils, there are top notes and middle notes and bottom notes, and it's really nice when you get a blend that uses a mixture of those things to go together. And then the florals like lavender also go well with citrus or even peppermint. Just So it's nice we can do the single oils in them or we can do the blends, and that's fun. We're gonna cut this peppermint mocha soap that we made yesterday. This soap is made with coffee butter, peppermint essential oil, and organic chocolate. So it has a nice blend. And it's still conditioning. It still has the herbal infusion, but it's also more just for fun and just to smell really good. And the peppermint's kind of a good wake up bar. And we usually can do about 10 or 11 bars at a time. Then we will trim the soap probably about 24 hours later. This is our lemongrass soap. We don't do the top because of the design on the top. So we do three sides, flip it and do the other three. 
and that bevels the edges, which makes it really uh, easy to hang on to in the bath or shower, and then stamp it within about a week and have it ready to go. We have a gift shop on our farm, and people are starting to learn more about that and come here and pick out their soaps. I didn't really think of myself as a creative person until I started making soap, and I enjoy the creativity that goes into that and just the little little um, swirls that we do on top, and we just try different things. And I realized how much fun it is to to color the soap so that someone kind of already has an idea that this might be lemongrass, this might be orange, and this might be lavender. We do the Wool Festival each October. It's always the first full weekend in October in Falmouth, Kentucky. And sometimes we go to other little festivals and shows around our community. We really enjoy meeting the people that come to the shows because people come up to your booth when they're interested in what you do or they have a need or they just want to talk and just the relationships that we have made with this business. We have friends that we otherwise wouldn't have known. It's not my personality to stand there and try to sell what I have. I just have something to offer and if it's something that they're interested in and we talk about it, that's fun to me. To, to hear someone come back and say, this really helped my skin or my child's skin and that's a delightful thing to hear. If your life can touch someone else's life in some small way, that is such a blessing.